now. They should be done in two minutes. Can I trust you to look after them? Why, sure, Steve. I wouldn't want them to run away on you. <laughs> Smart Alec. <laughs> Go on now, Watson. Exits that way. <laughs> you crack me up. Okay, enough of the egg cracks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to this edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Now, Steve, eggs. I've got to tell you, if there's one thing that drives me absolutely crazy, it's when I make hard-boiled eggs. Mm -hmm. I try to peel them, and I can't get the darn uh, shell off without tearing the egg to pieces. What's the secret to doing that properly? Carl, there are many schools of thought, but what I like to do is once I boil the eggs after 10 minutes, I put them into ice cold water, chill them down right away. And then as you can see, the curvature of the egg, there's a large end and a small end. In there, there's an air bubble. We want to smash that on the board and the same with the other end. Roll it with the palm of your hand like so, and then just put it into a bowl of warm water and then it'll just peel right off. You know, I think that uh, the, the water helps, peeling them in water helps, because one thing that I do, which I find helps a little bit, is I peel the egg in uh, running water. Exactly, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'll just bring it straight off like so. You see, nice and smooth. Yeah, that's the perfect. Same as you the know, and, and the, uh, the egg white hasn't been damaged at it, all. None it's whatsoever. perfectly intact. Uh, another thing uh, that some people like to do is, I, I think this may work, I don't know, but they say if you uh, put some uh, baking soda into the water when you're boiling, boiling it helps the same separate, thing will separate yeah. the yeah. Uh, shell from the, from the egg itself. Uh, and, of course, these days you can buy them already peeled. Did you know that? Absolutely, yeah. in the grocery stores, that's, that's for right. sure. I've yep. done that, too, when I've been making deviled eggs. Dicks, yeah. Anyway, uh, lots of good information. And coming up, we have Mark McCarthy as our special guest. He's with McCarthy's Party, the tour company, and we're going to talk to him about tourism and all kinds of other stuff. And what are we going to be doing? We're going to be making a beautiful lamb cheese kebab with some basmati rice. Right, and we've got a new Korean restaurant in town. Julia Kwan is here from uh, J Korean Restaurant, and she's going to do a fantastic St. John's roll. Stay tuned. The other day I met McCarthy coming down the way, and he did say to me, won't you come to our party? The house, to be sure, will be crowded to the door. Well, our guest on One Chef, One Critic today does know how to throw a good party, or convention, or tour, large or small. He is Mark McCarthy of McCarthy's Party, and uh, McCarthy's Party has been in the tourism business in St. John's since 1982. Welcome, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. And you're also uh, the chair now of Destination St. John's. That's correct, yeah. So there's lots of stuff we can talk to you about. I hope. <laughs> uh, and uh, Cook as well. What are we going to do, Steve? Absolutely, Mark. Welcome on, welcome on board with us. Thanks. What are we going to be doing today, Mark? We're going to be making some <clears throat> beautiful lamb kebabs with some nice red, yellow and green peppers on there. And I, once we get started, I'm going to get you to make us a nice green peppercorn sauce with a little bit of marmalade in there. No problem. So I'll get started. First of all, what I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll make my kebabs. And what I did here, I've got some nice lean legs of uh, lamb, which I'm marinating in some lime juice and some fresh uh, rosemary. So first of all, I'll just put them some pieces on. And then I'll just go along and just add some onions as we go. And we'll put some peppers on there as well. So. Mark, I guess food is a big part of the, the tourism experience. Uh, do your clients often want to taste traditional Newfoundland dishes? I think um, if they're going to be here with a meeting or an incentive program or even a, a touring program, a leisure program, they are definitely going to want to experience something that we consider ours or something mm -hmm. that's local, mm -hmm. as we all do when we travel. I mean, it's right. if you're yeah. adventurous at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think the other thing you should remember is we always say in Newfoundland there's no such thing as an accidental tourist. The people who come here are experienced travelers. They want to be here, and they want to experience as much local yeah, things as they can. That's right. So, this, yeah. this is a destination, yeah. yeah. Um, so how do you make sure that, what, you know, Newfoundland cuisine, for example, uh, it's sad to say, but there are some places that don't do food very well. Yeah. How do you make sure they get the best, the best of the local cuisine? If they're going to go out and have fish cakes, or if they're going to have mussels, or if they're going to have whatever, fish and brews, how do you make sure they get the best? 
Well, some of that is my own tasting, I guess. Uh, I think that as we plan programming, we do have to make, make an effort to get out yeah. to see our suppliers. Yeah. Not just in St. John's, a lot of variety here. Again, also a lot of qu different qualities and different qualities might not be the right word, but different preparation styles that would mm -hmm. work with my clients or wouldn't work with my clients. Mm -hmm. But as I get across Newfoundland, we definitely have to be very clear with our suppliers about what our people expect and uh, have the pleasure of tasting it to make sure it's yeah, going to work. Well, because you want them to come back, or at least you want them yeah. to go away having had a good experience and tell folks about it. Yeah, every, every piece from the airport in matters. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah. Okay, what I've done, I've just put a little bit of spray on there, Carl, and that'll prevent it from sticking. I'll give them to you, then you can pop them on the grill, and then I'll get you to season them. Okay. Okay, Mark, what we'll do, we'll pop the, I'll give you the wooden spoon, I'll get you to stir. Mm. There you go. <laughs> we'll add the onions into that. Stir we'll, now? Stir now, keep yeah. them going, yeah. And turn the heat up on there. And we're going to be making our green peppercorn sauce there, so that's perfect. And actually, I think we've got the perfect destination here. And I've, I've had the good opportunity to go with you, whether it be to Ottawa or whether it be to Toronto, and promote the province. Bristol, yeah. we did it one time. Oh, yes, remember? we did Bristol. Uh, we had that back in 96. <laughs> yeah, uh, now we're starting to show our age, you know. Yeah. But uh, it is truly amazing how people do want to make this a, a destination. It's, we've got a very unique destination here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you guys certainly do uh, a resounding job when you go out on the road, that's for sure. So. Mark, you were in, G in Geneva this year. Yeah. What, what was that all about? Well, I'm, we're part of a selling consortium, the Newfoundland and Labrador government, and I'm the, with the private sector partner, uh, as well as uh, the other partners in Canada, um, Ireland, England, Switzerland, mm -hmm. Monaco, and Germany. And every year we go to one of those countries and we invite a bunch of American and Canadian organizers of corporate meetings and incentive programs to come in and meet with us and talk about bringing their meetings and incentive programs to our destination. Mm -hmm. So we're there as part of Canada, but truly we're selling Newfoundland and Labrador to these mm -hmm. clients. So. And this year it was Geneva. Yeah. Yeah. And there was something interesting you learned, uh, which I, I, I amazed me, uh, and it had to do with Monaco. Just tell us about that. Well, one of the advantages, or one of the things that's working to our advantage, I guess I, I could say this year, is that um, the people in Monaco were explaining that they've had a bit of a rough year in terms of selling incentive travel, and that's mm -hmm. rewarding the best customers or board right. travel. Right, yeah. Um, because the perception of taking your board to Monaco in these economic times is not a very good sell right now. Right. They're all afraid yeah. to say they went to Monaco. So, or they, or they because went of to, the gambling and everything. It's, well, I think it's also perceived that it's a really high-end, high, 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 yeah. 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 elaborate yeah. trip. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you can get away with some of the other destinations. Yeah. And we did have people in the United States telling us that they have a difficult time leaving North America right now because of that. Right. And that they're doing a lot of things uh, domestically. And in particular, they were looking at Canada because it's not perceived that exotic, but they can really get uh, uh, a good response. So, from Monaco to may maybe Newfoundland. <laughs> yeah, we, we're actually working on a group that, that could be the case that's for this great. coming June. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's coming on quite nicely there, uh, Mark. We've got yeah. the onions there, the shallots, and we've got the green peppercorns, a little bit of butter. Now we're just going to add some marmalade in there to sweeten the pot up, so to speak. There, in there. I'll get you to stir that in. That and the whole dish, once the, the, the lamb, we're going to cook that medium rare. That's only going to take about yep. 10 minutes to, to cook, and then once that comes yeah. through and comes to the boil, I think that'll be quite nice, actually. Mark, when, uh, when tourists come here, what's the one thing that kind of blows them away or that, they, that really surprises them? I, I think that the landscape, the nature, uh, any of the wildlife they can see is definitely popular, and I think the advertising campaign speaks to that a bit. Yeah, for but sure. But I don't think you'll ever get a better, greater response than when they talk about their interactions with local people, mm. whether they're in restaurants, in hotels, when they're just on the road and meet people. They just get a real charge out of our uh, lifestyle, out of our attitude, mm. and mm -hmm. it is almost completely positive response to the Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. So I really think uh, it's hard to sell culture in an advertising campaign, mm -hmm. but it's probably our greatest asset. You've got to see, smell, and experience it. Don't you really you? do, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And our four seasons in one day. And uh, yeah. you know, for, they really, all the citizens in this province really do a great job in representing mm -hmm. themselves to, the, to That's our right, travelers. Yeah. And just be natural about it as well, aren't they? They really enjoy that part yeah, more yeah. than anything, I think. Yeah. We'll just add some gravy into that. Okay, so Steve good. just mentioned seasons. Uh, is it essentially a seasonal uh, business, your business? Mine is a, a three-season business is the best way to describe okay, it in yeah. terms of people traveling here. Yeah. Uh, and that would be spring and fall would largely be uh, convention and meeting periods. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and then July and August would be your leisure travelers, and they will come through at that point. Right. Yeah. We do get business almost every month, 
but you don't get a mm. tremendous amount of business every month. Right. Yeah. And what about the bus tours? Is that uh, mainly well, spring and fall? Uh, June, July, August, and September. September. Yeah. Now next year we're actually going a bit earlier in June because we're going to do a bus tour over the new Labrador Highway. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, the first, is it? Uh, uh, well, I think some, a German company did it this year. Oh, is that I'm right? not sure yeah. who it was. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's that company where they actually sleep in their coach. Oh, really? They oh, have like yeah. 16 beds built into a coach. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah. I don't think I can sell that product. Yeah. But, uh, but they like it. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be interesting to get a chance to go over that, like one of the last frontiers in North America. And mm. uh, the interest already from our clients is high. So. It's phenomenal. But we're yeah. going to go in early June just because to take advantage of the good weather in central Labrador. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also to maybe get a chance to do some fishing when we're there. So, so uh, sport oh fishing. my gosh, yeah. And how yeah. many people would go on that to particular tour? We'll be 30 to 35 Five, people. So you have a full coach? Then. Yeah, well, yeah. our coaches are about 56 passengers, mm -hmm. but we will try and keep it to 35 just so it's comfortable for everybody mm -hmm. in that trip. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of age group would be in there? Are we looking from 40 mm -hmm. upwards? or? Are we... I think on a bus tour like that, we're, are, we don't get a lot of 40 year olds, no. but I think that we'll certainly be the 55 to 65 60, okay. group. There are a few hikes on that mm. trip. We're going to hike into yeah. the old Churchill Falls, hike into Muskrat Falls. Oh. Uh, so yeah. some of those things are going to have to be physically capable of doing, right? Mm. So, but sure, uh, yeah. great response yeah. so far. Well, uh, this seems to be under control here, Steve. I think so, Carl, uh, yeah. Mark has the sauce going there. I'm yeah. going to go down to the wine cellar and get a wine to go with this. Perfect. Perfect. They always pick a good wine out down there. I'm thinking red maybe, but we don't know. Yeah. What do you think with lamb, red? New red, I think so, yeah. yeah. You know, possibly a rosé, but they, they do do a good job. Yeah. So this Geneva trip was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. wish I had a little bit more time? I would there? have loved to have had more time. Yeah. And uh, we did, uh, I did get a chance to walk along Lake Geneva. Hey, Andrew. Hello, Carl. We have lamb today. Ooh, what a Shish kebab or kebab, whichever you prefer. Kind what of a, Middle Eastern, I guess. What uh, a lucky guest you have up there today, yes, Mr. McCarthy, you, I hear. Yeah, so, well, uh, this is a gamey uh, meat, so we're going to give you some meaty, gamey wines, mm -hmm. okay? okay. Uh, two countries that do that very well are Spain and France. Uh, they actually say one of the classic matches in the world for lamb is a Tempranillo from Rioja. So you know what I have brought for you today? A Tempranillo from Rioja. This is uh, only a five th uh, 500 mil. Uh, I can't believe you brought such a small <laughs> bottle into this cellar. You know, we don't have the 750 yet, so I, I love this product so much, I'm going to push it in any size. And yes, uh, this is the 500 mil. We'll more of it. Uh, yeah. Well, we will, and we're selling this, <laughs> quite a bit of this. And you know what? The juice does the talking. Mm -hmm. You need to actually try this to, to, to see what I mean. But uh, I, I, I very much like this wine. 100% uh, tempranillo. The juice does the talking. I like that. <laughs> so this is our Spanish option. Mm -hmm. A second classic match for lamb would be left bank Bordeaux yep. and here's what we've gone with the Thomas Barton uh, reserve it's from the Medoc it is a blend primarily of Cabernet Sauvignon with some Merlot and uh, this has beautiful nice tannins to go with the fat of the lamb they soften each other excellent selection and for most uh, most of my life this is what I've always recommended would be a cab blend or Tempranillo with lamb but uh, people have introduced me to Pinot Noir and lamb I never really gave it a chance, and now I see such great things in this. And I've chosen an older Pinot Noir for us today. This is the 2002 Dufalor. Okay, now I chose the older version because we're getting away from the fruit. We're now into more, we're away from aroma into a bouquet. So here you would almost smell and taste the, the things of autumn or fall, mm -hmm. decaying leaves, things like that, things that are desirable in an older wine. And this will go very nice with the gaminess and meatiness of this lamb. More so than a fruit forward, new world, something like that. I think we go old world here. I've never really thought of decaying leaves as anything that, you know, I find palatable, Andrew. I understand. You wine guys, honestly. I, you know, <laughs> Andrea talks about barnyard and poop, and uh, you're talking about decayed leaves. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know what? I think it's really cool that this guy, Thomas Burton, yes. who was an Irishman, yes. went to France and became famous for making French wine. So because we have such a strong tie with Ireland, Do it. I'm going to be very I think know, Mark will be happy with that. patriotic. And McCarthy, Irish, see these connections oh, I'm wow. making? Uh, you know. It's a whole other show. So, uh, Thomas Burton it Burton. is. Burton. Thank you very much. Not Burton. Well, in France, they <laughs> probably call him Thomas Barton. Give my best to Monsieur everyone upstairs. Barton. Okay. I'll just hang out down here. Au revoir. Miss you. Bye, Carl. He left me the Pinot Noir. <laughs> He's crazy. Now, I know Andrew has made a good choice of wines. I'm just going to remove the last lamb shish kebab, 
from the grill, which Carl nicely seasoned, like so. We will now pick up the plate. A little bit of Mark's excellent green peppercorn sauce with a little bit of marmalade in there, like so. A little garnish, and to the table. Mm. We've got a nice full-bodied red wine to go with this slam. This mm. is uh, Thomas Barton Madoc, and this looks great. Yeah. Uh, oh. Mark, why don't you have a taste? And I'll gladly give kick us, it off here. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Give, us, uh, yeah, give us your review of this lamb dish. Would I serve this to my tourists just now? That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you would if it, if it were Newfoundland lamb, you'd have to. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We'll go down to St. Bride's and pick some up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a branch, I guess. Mm. Very good. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Very tender. Mm -hmm. yeah. With all the vegetables there. Mm -hmm. Something else. Yeah. Excellent. Mark, before you go, um, I wanted to mention uh, something else that you're involved with, and I'm involved with it as well. Gold Medal Plates, which is an annual fundraiser uh, to raise money for Canadian Olympic athletes. Mm -hmm. um, it helps the Own the Podium program, which uh, we did so well with at, uh, at the Vancouver Olympics. Yeah. Just uh, give us a brief overview of how the Gold Medal Plates and John's event <coughs> works. Um, we are one of seven in Canada mm -hmm. and the only one east of Montreal, so we're pretty happy with that. Um, it's a competition, I guess the, the idea of gold medal plates was that there was a feeling in the Canadian Olympic Committee that there was a disconnect between our athletes and our corporate community. So the idea was that we were going to set up an event that would celebrate excellence in Canada, not just ex excellence in athletics, but excellence in culinary, in wine, in, right. and in entertainment. So gold medal plates has spawned from this. Mm -hmm. uh, truly, it is a chef's competition. Mm -hmm. Eight chefs in, in uh, St. John's, or, or and well, eight St. John's and, um, and our surrounds, doesn't have to be St. John's, will come together and create competition plates, and they will be judged on the, the dishes mm -hmm. that they prepare. Yeah. And the winner of the St. John's competition receives the gold medal plate for Canada, and then goes on to the Canadian Culinary Co Co Championships, which are in um, British, British Columbia, Columbia. Mm -hmm. every single year. Um, the neat thing is that 350 of us get to go to the event and get to try all of these competition plates. Exactly, yeah. What is particularly challenging for the chefs is that they have to create 350 equal plates because they really mm. don't know when the chefs are going to come and take a plate. <laughs> and uh, that is a real That's challenge right. for them. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, it's a great challenge of their skills and their, and their artistic ability. And for us as samplers, it's a great uh, uh, experience to get out and try the best the chefs have. It's great for them too because uh, quite often they get to create a dish that they wouldn't necessarily serve in their restaurants. Exactly. It might be a little bit more challenging. Well, the competition mm -hmm. is stiff, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and it is a fabulous event, and if anybody wants to find out more about it, they can contact you mm -hmm. at uh, mark at McCarthy's party .com. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Okay, uh, well, listen, thank you very much for being on the well, show today. It's been much. a pleasure having you, and coming up next, we're going to be with Julia Kwan of J. Korean Restaurant in St. John's, and she's going to make a, a great St. John's roll for us. Stay tuned. Well, there is a fabulous new restaurant in St. John's. It's called J. Korean or Julia's Korean Restaurant. It's a beautiful spot, uh, beautiful decor, beautiful menus, and a uh, beautiful owner and chef, Julia Kwan, who's with us now. 안녕하십니까. And same to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Julia, um, we love the food in your restaurant, and uh, looks like you've got uh, quite an arrangement here for us. Julia, looks like you've got some fantastic ingredients. You've got some Thank fresh you. vegetables, some beef, some rice, and uh, what are we going to be making today? Today I'm going to make the kimbap, it we call the St. John's roll, or JKL. So, okay. so this is a Korean, a uh, really fine seaweed. Ah. It's a pretty. Yeah. When I use the uh, JKL roll, I always clean a uh, bag. So you put the gloves on so it, yes. nothing will stick to your fingers yes. or anything like that. So That's right. And the more clean. Yeah. And actually, you've got a, a little box of them here with a big <laughs> dispenser. Yeah, this from Korea. <laughs> yeah. Great. So what are we using? Is that a short this grain? This is right? a short grain. I yeah. steam it. And I just already marinate. Some and put what would some you it in? some put some salt, salt. some uh, uh, little vinegar, and some sesame oil mm -hmm. and sesame. 
You can really smell the aroma yes. coming through this, there. Yes, this smell, the sesame oil yeah. smell, is really good and really taste. This this looks like a, actually a fun dish to put together. I bet I bet kids would love to. Uh, yes, <laughs> get their fingers into it. Yeah. Right? When I uh, my boy, little boy, mm -hmm. is, he loved to try to. Mm, yeah. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. all the spread out. All nice and, and even. Yeah. yeah. And half of the seaweed. Oh. Covered. Okay. Ah, a little trick and, there. Uh, this is uh, uh, I prepared uh, just fried egg yeah. and carrot and tonic green. This is a, a Korean, uh, like a robo pickle. Oh, okay, yeah. So each vegetable. A little bit of uh, tartness there with the yeah. pickle. Yes, it's really colorful and the decoration and the coordination. Mm. Steve, I think Julia's got great knife skills. Look oh, how I think so. <laughs> <laughs> These vegetables are cut. Absolutely. And did you say tonic greens there? Yes, ah, tonic the greens. Newfoundland, Newfoundland the tonic oh, greens. Oh, it's that's, really oh, good. that's why yeah. it's St. John's Roll. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love this. Yes, Newfoundlanders love their yeah. turnip greens. Yeah. It's lots of vitamin C, and right? did you steam those or just saute them? What, yeah, you? just a little steam it. Okay. And I already marinate, just a mm. little salted. A little yeah. salt as yes, well. Yes, yeah. that's it, yeah. Bring out the brine. And this is, a, I prepared two kind of meat. This is a beef, really slightly beef. And this is the same one, but this is a spicy one. Oh, mm -hmm. spicy. We uh, never use the MSG. We no? just prepared the, uh, at least 10 hours marinade, and they make the natural salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, uh, it's interesting too, look at the difference in color. Color, yes. we had two, yeah. Yep. Yep. Which spicy. one do you like, spicy one or not spicy? Oh, spicy. Okay, yes. I'll make the spice we're, for we're you. Full of spice, me and Steve. This is the spiciest yeah, show. This is a really oh, spicy. Oh, indeed it is, indeed yeah. it is. Sure. Actually, yeah. this, this pepper, my mother in know growing, mm -hmm. and then she made for me and I sent it from Korea. Oh, very good. So yeah. we feel very honored today. Yes. Okay, now we've got and to see how you roll this roll up. Roll this. So this is why you have the mat. It helps yes. to shape. Uh, Some more pieces. strings, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm, very good. Really nice and tight. Yeah, nice and tight. And then you just strip it. There, you, there yeah. we go. Isn't that great? Perfect. And then after, this is the uh, uh, oil, the sesame oil, to that. And put your hand. Mm -hmm. Ah, nice. And ah. Really it's keeps really it nice and moist, yes, doesn't it? Yes, nice and moist, yeah. That's a good little tip for myself. <laughs> That's and I'll now prepare the dish. Yep. And cut it. Very nice. Look at the colors coming through there. Oh, yeah. yeah. This this end one doesn't look quite as good, so we'll take that See. one out. And this is what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try? Oh, absolutely. Thank mm. you. <laughs> mm. Oh, my gosh. That's really delicious. <laughs> mm. If you like the more spicy, I prepare this Korean uh, spice things. Okay. To serve on the side. Yeah. Yep. That looks absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. Julia, you've, oh, been, uh, beautiful. you've been a great guest. And there you go, folks. St. John's Roll from Julia's Korean Korea. Restaurant. Thank you, Julia Kwan. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. Thank you. Yeah, this one. Yeah. One sauce on yeah. yeah, this is really good spicy. Mm. <laughs> Oh, oh, very, very nice. Paul Roger, I must have drank this one. Looks like a Jeremy wine here. Oh, oh definitely, Andrea. You're still here? Sorry, Carl, I had nowhere else to go. You know, it's really weird. Uh, this is like the third time I have come in to this cellar and found one of you wine experts still here long after you were supposed to be well, here. Well, someone has to know about your lovely selection of wines, so oh. uh, I've taken it upon myself. Is that what you've been doing? I kind of doing, I'm, studying my lovely yeah, selection of wines? Learn, liquid is that what rings. you've been doing, studying my selection of wines? Do I see empty yeah. bottles your here anywhere today? Not, your production crew will not I'll let tell me you in what. there with a corkscrew. I'll tell you what. You, you've been studying these wines? Yes. 
I'm going to pick a one. Okay. Just to see I'll how well you've eyes. been studying. Because I have my doubts. I have my doubts. Let me see here. Huh. How about this? Tell me everything you know about this wine. Ooh, Chilean wine, Concha Toro. Tironio. You know what? I did uh, one day try this wine. I had many mixed feelings about this Carmenere grape, and it was actually this actual product that brought me back to Carmenere. Uh, Tironio means terroir, believe it or not. So this is what this wine tries to accomplish. It wants you to be able to taste the dirt the grapes were grown in. This is why they talk about the vineyard selection. Block 27. They basically show you right in the label exactly where the grapes were grown for this wine. <laughs> You're gonna have okay. to do it. Okay. Let's do. You can do my wine class. We'll have carry a lot of fun. On, carry on. Carry on. Carry on. I'd like a corkscrew, please.